Hi guys, uh, talking about properties of parallel lines, we just talked a lot about it in the last lesson. I do want to talk about like some simple ones or some complex problems that have multiple uh, parallel lines in there. So like for example, let's say we, well this one doesn't have multiple parallel lines, but it does have two parallel lines with two transversals. And usually they connotate the transversals by numbers. So this is transversal 2, this is transversal 1, you know, and you can do some stuff. Now here's the thing. If you do do angles over here, so let's say we did this as 120 degrees. Oh, it's 248. Okay, that does not mean I can jump over here and start on these ones. The only angles that are going to be related here are going to be these eight. Okay, these eight over here are going to have a different relationship. So usually you have to mess around with it and just think about it and just work with it because there's some stuff you can do. So let's say that this was 120. Uh, this was... Uh, Let's say that this was 5x and then this turned out to be uh, 3x plus 20. Let me see what do. We'll probably have to move. Yep, that's right. Okay, so now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, how do I get this? Well, here's the thing. You know a couple of things about this. The 120 and the 5x. They are same side interior, so you know that they both add up to 180. So set up your equation, 5x plus 120 equals 180. So that's pretty simple. Okay, so you minus 120 from both, you get 5x equals uh, 60. And then if you divide both sides by 5, okay, you're going to get x equals uh, 12. <laughs> Why did I have to think about that? Well, that helps in getting this. You now know this is 60 degrees, so all it's 248. Okay, and you can fill out all the rest of these angles. So this is 120, this is 60, so that's pretty simple. And you can fill all these out, and voila, you're done on this side. But how do you go to the other side? Well, if you notice, I have the value of x now. Now I can plug it in and actually find it. So this becomes 36 plus 20. All right, which turns into 56. And so if that's 56, I can fill out the rest of this side because I know this is 56 because it's vertical. I know this is 56 because that is, nope, that's not 56. The other one's 56, duh. See, if you sit there and think about it and come up with reasons why, you'll correct yourself. These two are 56 because they are corresponding and this one is alternate interior, so this is 56 as well, so I know all those. But I also know that these add up to 180, so this has to be 124, this has to be 124, 124, and this has to be 124 by a multitude of reasons. Okay, so when you're dealing with these type of problems, you need to sit there and take your time work through it and just think about okay what am I actually doing how am I actually going about doing this okay and you can also translate this to uh, a whole bunch of problems that have like three corresponding parts you could just know one part and then just work your way through just by knowing these cool facts about properties of parallel lines okay all right uh, mm, yeah, let's go over it yeah Nope, that's right there. Okay, uh, when you're dealing with multiple ones and you're making triangles, okay, just know this, that the sum of the angles inside a triangle is 180 degrees. So that should help out. Uh, another thing that will also help you get out of jams is the sum of the angles inside a quadrilateral and this has to be let me let me rephrase that this should be a convex okay so here let me move it boom quadrilateral is 360 degrees so that's another thing that can help out too when you're working with this stuff all right 
Thank you guys very much. Have a great day. Bye.